Hello, everyone. We are live. <clears throat> Welcome to AGH at Home. This is Workshop Wednesday. Uh, my name is Tyler, and I have an exciting new project here for you today. Um, and like always, we're going <clears> to <throat> take a couple of minutes to sort of settle in and make sure that we get all the supplies uh, that we need to. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat or the comments below throughout the, uh, the session, and I will do my best to, uh, to take a look at those. I might not be able to see all of them during the stream, but I definitely look at them all afterwards and uh, make sure I answer all the questions if there is any. All right, so... Um, Today we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at graphic painting or sort of very kind of bold, uh, strong lines and strong colors. Um, and some of the things that we're going to need today are um, some paper to work on. So you could use a regular sheet of paper. Uh, you could use like a piece of cardboard, a panel, canvas. Uh, whatever whatever works best for you. I've got a nice big sheet of um, watercolor paper here. Um, you're also going to need some paper that uh, you can cut stencils out of. I've got some sort of thick, this is paper that's for drawing pastels, but um, really anything thicker, I would say a little bit thicker than uh, printer paper. Printer paper will work okay, but maybe it won't last very long. Um, so if you don't have that, uh, something thicker than that, like cardstock will work fine or like cardboard from a cereal box. Uh, that stuff is really, really excellent because it's stronger, but it's a little, it's still nice and thin. It's easy to cut up, uh, scissors and, or an exacto knife. If you feel comfortable with it, uh, for the stencil cutting part, um, some tape, um, let's see. And today I'm going to be using some acrylic paint. I've got a couple different colors here. Um, and I'm, you know, fortunate to have those things with me. If you don't have those things in your studio setup, everything that we're doing can be done easily with, uh, collage techniques, uh, or and things like pastels uh, or other drawing supplies. So use whatever you have, um, and that's you know that's uh, that's my goal for these workshops is to use materials, um, but do projects that are adaptable to other materials as well. Um, so that, for example, if you don't have acrylic paint, um, then you're not out of luck. You can still you can still do the project in in uh, a couple of different ways. All right, so I'm gonna give you a minute or two to gather up those things if you are. Um, I also use, I usually use this piece of, uh, it's a thick piece of vinyl or like plastic. Uh, I use my palette for paint. Um, I usually put a white piece of paper underneath so I can see the color on top. Um, you know, you could use wax paper, a paper plate. Um, I tend to try to use something that I can reuse so that way I'm not, you know, putting paint on a, paper plate and then throwing that out or, or whatever. Uh, and then a cup with some water in it. Um, and I think that's all the things. So uh, yes, we will get started in a second. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention while you're still gra grabbing some of your things uh, is as always, if you're here to just sort of relax and watch, that's absolutely that's absolutely great. Uh, we're just so happy that uh, we could all sort of gather here today. Um, and if you are joining, uh, these videos are always recorded, so you can always sort of back it up um, if you missed a part or if I go too fast. I try and keep it within kind of a, a certain 20, 30 minute time frame. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to be listening to me yakking on all afternoon. So um, also it's super, super encouraging for me when folks share their work. Um, I love to see, and I love to hear about, and I love to see when folks are, uh, making their own work during these sessions or afterwards, uh, and then they share it with us. Um, 
it's super encouraging for for me to see what people are doing because I'm sitting here in my studio and normally when I'm teaching there's students and people in front of me creating uh, but this is a little bit strange because I don't have anyone sitting physically in front of me and I can't actually see what people are making so if you do make something and you feel uh, like you want to share it with us please please do so um, it's, you know, even if you just made something just to have a fun time, like it doesn't matter. Art is art. And, uh, and I love to see what people make. Okay. So essentially what we're going to be looking at today is creating an image or creating a picture, um, by using, getting some very, very straight cut lines and very sh sort of sharp, uh, sharp, fine lines. And I, this piece here that it's not quite finished, um, I used these, these are rather sort of big, bigger brushes. I didn't use any fine, small brushes for any of this. Uh, I used sort of mostly, mostly these um, and uh, a number of stencils to get this look. So you don't have to have like a super steady hand. You don't need to be super exact about things. You can see here, I've got a nice sharp line for, between this orange and uh, the magenta there. And I, you know, I use this big fat brush for that. Um, so what you're gonna need to do first is create a stencil or a couple of stencils. They don't have to be super complicated. In fact, the simpler that they are, the better and, and sort of bolder your, your, your picture will, will appear. So what I did to begin is I cut this, it was a large sheet of paper. I just cut it into sections. You can see here, I just cut a curvy line there. I cut a curved line there. I cut a jagged line out of this end. And then I've got a straight line there. So already I have one, two, three, four, five, six different, um, different edges that I'm going to stencil from. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Uh, another thing that you'll, you'll want to do uh, or that you can do is by cutting a sort of a shape out of another shape. Um, so it can be as complicated or simple as you want. This one, I'm going to show you here, pick it up. Okay. So I had just a, just a plain rectangle and then I kind of cut this, this warbly kind of, okay, let's move this out of the way so you can see it on the white. So you can kind of see, and what I want, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to keep the part it came from and the part I cut out. I'm going to keep both of those and use them both uh, a couple times. All right, so I'm going to put those over here. Uh, this is the one that I use for uh, for the piece I was making earlier. So out of a black piece of paper, I cut uh, sort of the portrait, like the side view of a person's head. And again, I'm going to keep both of these. Uh, and this sort of brings me to the inspiration for today's project. Uh, we're looking at an artist by the name of Michael Snow. Um, and he created this artwork called Walking Woman, uh, which was a whole series. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, take a, take a minute and just kind of look it up on Google, type in Michael Snow, Walking Woman, um, and you'll kind of get uh, a little bit of an idea of what I mean. So there we've got a, a figure in like very bold and very graphic um, lines. So we're gonna try to achieve that today. Um, so again, you can also go pretty simple, as simple as just cutting a circle out of a square uh, or a rectangle rather. I've already pre-drawn it out. I'm gonna cut that one out. Okay, again, I'm gonna keep both the circle and the, the rectangle that I cut the circle out of. I'm gonna maybe adjust this one just a little bit, just trim it up a bit. There we go. All right, so I've got a handful of stencils here that, that now I'm going to, to use. 
uh, to create my picture. Um, what you can do ahead of time, if you're not quite sure what you'd like to do, you can follow the, the uh, you can go by the collage uh, technique that I tend to use uh, or that lots of folks tend to use um, that we did last week and, and probably the week before that, where you're taking your pieces and you know, you're just gonna maybe kind of lay them down and just kind of arrange them. You know, maybe I like it that way. Maybe I prefer it this way. Yeah, actually I kind of like that because now this kind of looks like a nose and then I've got a nose, but they're looking in, in different directions. So, so maybe I'll I'll go I'll go with this, um, or you know maybe instead of instead of that maybe I want maybe I want like a curved line on this side as well. Okay, so so yeah, I do quite like that. So I'm not going to glue them down because I'm going to be using them as stencils. However. If you're not using paint and you are using uh, uh, these as collage items, you're just you're simply going to glue these down and then you'll be done. Um, okay, so now I get to choose some colors that I'm going to work with. I'm going to lay down kind of my background layer first, and then I'm going to put the silhouette of the face on next. So I'm going to go into uh, let's see. I'm going to start with some orange here and a little bit of magenta and I'm gonna mix them together a little bit. And I'm gonna paint uh, right on here um, along this line, I'm gonna go kind of gentle. I'm gonna start on the stencil and kind of pull away, kind of like that. So I'm, I'm getting some paint right on my stencil. I'm gonna try not to go brush back this way too much because I wanna avoid uh, the risk of getting my paintbrush slipping underneath the stencil. And you can tape it down in as many places as you want. And if you want, you know, really, really intricate designs or really intricate, you know, you can cut a zigzag out of this or, or uh, you know, loop-de-loops or whatever you want. I'm going to go maybe about that far for this one. Notice how I'm, again, I'm still grabbing the paint and pulling it, starting on the stencil and then pulling it across. Maybe you can sort of dab it gently a little bit. I'm trying to be careful not to go, not to go under there. And I know I mixed together a bit of orange and magenta, but generally what I'm gonna be doing is putting one single color per section because then I'm gonna get a really, really strong, a strong look, especially for, uh, for, the, for when I'm starting out, um, I want it to stay very graphic. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that off and now I've got my nice straight, or it's not straight, but it's a nice sharp and clean line. All right, so I'm gonna save this for later. Uh, and what was next? I think it was maybe this one. Oh no, it was this, this piece. All right, okay. So. I don't remember how I had this exactly, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put this one maybe, I'm gonna put it on this side perhaps. So my next one, I'm gonna clip it right about there. I'm gonna do the same thing, but on the other side. So I'm gonna clean off my brush a little bit in the water. And this time I'm gonna use a little bit of blue. I'll squirt a little more in here. So these these paints, you can get them um, at any art store. I got these, I think, at Curry's. You can get them probably at Michael's as well. Uh, sometimes even um, 
you can check out uh, Staples or like an Office Depot or something like that. They will often have uh, some paint that that's actually not a bad quality. So, all right, some blue. And same thing, I'm gonna start from the stencil and move my way out. And this time I'm gonna go right to the edge. Sometimes I find, uh, especially with um, with like hobby paints that maybe, you know, maybe even if you find some paint from the dollar store, that's kind of uh, a little bit cheaper quality. Sometimes you find, uh, sometimes it's a little bit watered down, or it's a little bit thin. Um, and if you're painting, then you see the white come through or underneath the, the page. If you mix it sometimes with like a little bit of, uh, like if you have a blue and it's super thin, if you mix it with a little bit of white, um, it'll really change the opacity. It'll change, it'll make the color a little bit thicker and harder to kind of see through. It'll change the color, of course, it'll be a little bit lighter blue, but it makes it a little bit thicker. Um, I mean, not all paints will do that, but you can kind of, experiment uh, with a few things to kind of make it a little bit thicker. All right, so now I'm gonna take that off. And now I have this nice kind of sharp line going through there. All right, so now I want to fill in this middle area. Now this is gonna be a bit of a challenge because I want to keep these nice straight lines uh, and, I, and I want this to be not white. So maybe I'll use orange for this one. And what I'm going to do, let's see, does that match up? That's pretty close. Oops. So I'm going to clip this one here. Now you can line it up if you want to, or you can even set it back a little bit. This one you can you know you can really put that I'm gonna tape it down because I want this one to be a little extra a little extra sturdy. Um, so this with this you can uh, you can change that line if you want that actually to be like a straight or a jagged line you can actually just put a different stencil over paint right over. All right, so oops, that's very watery. Get some orange in here again, starting on my stencil and pulling away i'm not i'm gonna go close to the blue but i'm not i'm gonna try not to touch it it's okay if i accidentally hit that blue because well i can just cover it up again the nice thing about uh, especially acrylic paints is if you let them dry you can paint right over top of what you've already done Okay, now I'm gonna pull this part off and reveal. Now I've got my nice kind of sharp, clean, curvy line. I don't know, that might be kind of hard to see on the screen because it's kind of a, uh, a close, um, they're close in, in color, not a high contrast there. Okay, so I'm gonna, I need to do a little more orange for this area. Now that's not gonna quite work because it's opposite, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hold this piece just like that and do this sort of uh, one little piece at a time. You could even use painter's tape. Honestly, this is, this is no different from if you were painting a house and you didn't wanna get paint on your baseboards. Professional painters, house painters do this. Why can't we, right? It gets a nice, uh, a nice sort of, oopsies. That's okay, I gotta chop the bottom off of that anyways. Okay, it's a little bit there. I wanna just kinda edge it there. There we go. Nice, okay. Same thing, now you, you do wanna check the back of your stencil, make sure there isn't any wet paint on there because you don't wanna be pressing this down. 
uh, and accidentally getting, you know, some wet paint on the area that you've already painted, unless it's the same color or then it doesn't really matter. There we go. Okay, so there's your, oh, that's, cover that up. All right, so now I've got a nice kind of nice clean, clean cut lines, uh, lines there. There, that covered that up. Okay, uh, now take my stencil, where did that go? Here we go. This one. Uh, I'm going to use the this one first. I might come back to this one and use that one a little bit later. Uh, but now I'm going to put this maybe right about there. Take that down. A little extra tape here. And for this part, I want to have a nice, a nice contrast since this one that I'm putting on, this is kind of the main focus of my painting. Um, so I want it to really, really stand out from the background, right? Um, I'm putting on a whole second layer of paint. So I'm going to use some, some nice flat, dark black. Uh, maybe I'll mix a little tiny smidgen of blue in there just to kind of adjust the color so it's not just like kind of a flat kind of thing. And again, starting on the outside, pulling it in. Just kind of doing some light dabs here and there. And for this, I'm just going to kind of go around the edges to start. Hopefully I don't knock the easel off the table. Did that last week by accident. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take that off. And now doing the inside part, that's super easy. I'm just going to kind of fill fill that in. You may want to wait a little bit. See, I didn't wait for my orange to dry. I'm just kind of like going quickly. Um, so it kind of stuck to the stencil. So good question. How do we choose colors? Um, you know, that part I'm actually kind of doing a little bit on the fly. I did choose the, I personally really like magenta, so I just chose that as first. Um, and then I chose blue as, uh, blue and red, they're both primaries. Uh, and then the orange, that was kind of, I needed a little bit of a jolt between the blue and the orange. So, because they're kind of opposite colors. So when I'm choosing colors, I tend to think, especially for this kind of project, we're going, we're trying to get really bold, like a really bold and sharp look. So we wanna try and get something that, uh, that will contrast, so that way it can really stand out. Uh, but we wanna try and do that without making it too much chaos. So if I had like all these crazy clashing colors, then it would just kind of clash and be really, really loud and, and it would be really difficult for someone to read. Um, which is fine if you want to have that. Um, but that's why I throw in, there's some colors that they're close in the color wheel, they're close together uh, so, that, um, uh, so that there's a little more kind of harmony going on there. Okay. Okay, so now a little bit of damage control. You can see the nose is a little rounder than I would have hoped, uh, which is real handy 
that I still have the inside part. So normally I would, again, I would wait for this to dry, but since I'm sort of going kind of quick here for you to, to demonstrate, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. Um, and this is a good way for me to actually clean up this little mistake here. So I'm gonna tape this right over the one I made, the one I just did. And very gently, now I can kind of clean that up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab some more orange here and just kind of quickly going around the front there. And this way I can kind of clean up those lines a little bit. And also, you know, I can spend the first little bit mostly deciding on where things are gonna go and where the colors are gonna go. And I can spend kind of the last half kind of cleaning things up uh, and getting those sort of finishing, finishing touches. So I'm gonna cover that up again. Down. Let's see here. And let's take that off and see how it looked. There we go. Now you can see because it didn't I didn't let it dry. That's okay. Problem solved. It's a little black paint right over top of there. And we got it. Okay. So now I've got the basis of, of my work in here. I can also at this point, I can decide, you know, is that sticking out too much? Do I want to bring that in a little bit? Um, or can I get really crazy and um, perhaps I can put some of my other smaller stencils on here see what I can do with those. So I'm going to pop that one on there. And I want to use, get some, I want to get some, uh, some more contrast going. If I use just of a stark white, it might, it might be a little bit too much. So I want to sort of ease up, uh, ease up that transition or that contrast. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of orange got kind of more of a more of a pure kind of it's very light it's not very much orange I don't know if you can see it on my brush or not there's just a little bit in there and that's a ton I don't need that much it's kind of lightly and the reason for putting that little sort of flavor of orange in there is it helps It, it warms this part up a little bit and it helps us transition from this stark black to that sort of magenta, magenta red in there. See how that looks. That's not bad, I think. Uh, now, just to sort of finish off, uh, I'm out of that color. So actually what I'm gonna do instead, as you can see, I didn't go quite to the edges, uh, which is no problem. I'm going to just kind of trim. the top there as well. This isn't like the greatest way for me to cut this, but anyways, you get the idea. 
Reason for this is that if you have a really, really big panel or a really big sheet of paper, you don't have to fill up the whole thing. You can sort of trim it down and, and cut it to, uh, you know, once you do that, it really kind of like, it brings it together um, quite nicely. So that way I don't have this, this head, it's bigger now because that border, I've shrunk it much smaller. So that's all we, uh, all we have here for today. Uh, I wanna thank you again, very, very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure as it is every Wednesday. Uh, we do this once a week, 3.30 uh, every Wednesday. And we'd love to see you come back and join us again next week. Um, as always, if you make something, we would love to see your work. Uh, you can post it on Facebook or Instagram using this hashtag, AGH at home. And then we'll get to see it we can share it uh, with, all of, uh, with all of our friends as well. Um, something that we are going to be doing in the next week or so is I'm going to be doing a bit of a survey or a bit of a poll to see, you know, we've got about six, seven weeks behind us. We've done many different art styles. We've come this far. And I want to make sure that we're doing things that you want to see. So if there are things uh, in particular that you'd really like to see, then uh, I want to make sure that uh, that we get to do that. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. Probably be on Facebook or Instagram and uh, cast your vote and uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do the thing. All right, so again, my name's Tyler. Thanks again for joining us and uh, I hope you have a really lovely rest of your day. <laughs>